So let's start. So thank you very much for coming. So we are now open so this uh, special lectures by the winners of World, uh, World Cultural Council Award 2019. I am, I am Hideo Kinoshi, Vice President for Research, and on behalf of the University of Tsukuba, I would like to welcome you all. Now, let me introduce the first speaker to you. Uh, Dr. Son Ling Wang is chair and regent professor of uh, Georgia Institute of Te Technology USA and also the director of Beijing uh, Institute of uh, Nano Energy and Nano Systems. He is a physicist, material science, and uh, engineer specialized in uh, nanotechnology and energy science. He is known as a father of nanogenerators, a feat he has uh, developed for self-powered systems and large-scale blue energy. He is pioneer. Yeah, his pioneer's work is expected to change the world in the near future. He has uh, published over 1,500 peer review papers and has an enormous impact on the uh, nanotechnology community. The title of his lecture is a Nanogenerator for uh, Self Powered Systems, uh, Internet of Things, and Large Scale Blue Energy. So please join me to welcome uh, Dr. Wang to the stage. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor and a privilege to stand here to give a technical talk on our advances in those fields. The, I want to use the next 40 minutes to review the solutions we potentially find that face our world in the near future. As you see from this image, the world is fast changing. Our environment, our climate, especially the energy we use. As you see from this video, you can see in the last 40 years, the world North Pole, the ice melting, largely increased. So which is due to the global warming. So we use fossil energy for decades. How long can we sustain? How long we can go? Is there any new energy possibly subsidize or support us for the future? So my talk is our near f future thought on how to solve the world energy over the large scale or even on a smaller scale. As you can see, this time evolved here. You can see the area of ice drops dramatically. Okay, so this is our huge worry for the humankind. So when you look at the energy in, uh, uh, in the human history, it plays a vital role especially from the railroad power to the telephone to the space technology, automobile, and even to the modern electronics. Our energy has been largely dependent on coals, oils, but as we advance into smaller things, nanotechnology, internet of things, artificial intelligence, and what are the energy we possibly could use do this energy have the same characteristic as before? The answer may not be. Let me show you what's the difference. Our current technology for power delivery is such. Use the power plant, use cables, all use energy storage unit. Do this solve all of the problem or not? Okay, the answer, we do not solve all the problem. So what we are facing now, we face the distributed electronics, mobile electronics, just like each of us have a cell phone. In the huge, we're gonna have more and more. So these have vastly distributed mobile and most cases wireless. How do you power them? So by 2025, 30 billion objects will be moving. So this is another energy 
we are facing. For the last uh, two decades, I have been working on this problem to find uh, potential solutions, okay? So they say, why do we need uh, those so many electronics? Because these days, we need to monitor everything. You know, they know where you are, where you have been located, the speed at which you, 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 you move, all the things, so big data. So this is the era of Internet of Things, sensor network, big data. So we enter a new era, the era of Internet of Things, big data, and the sensor network, okay? So this is the near future we are facing. We want to do everything for that. So look at, look at that, how do we solve this problem? Traditionally, we have a power plant, have the cable deliver power to fix the sites, to Tsukuba University, to this conference center. Fix the sites, cable, solve it. But now, when you move this, Wireless, concentrated energy, go fix site, go distribute energy, order the energy delivery to disordered, wired to wireless. So we are face a diversity of energy application. So you can see this is just irreversible. So I call this the entropy application in energy distribution. So this is why you view it. It's just like an entropy. That's the world goes. The second law, thermodynamics. That's what tells us. Irreversible. Okay. What's, what's the entropy? Just use a simple example. Because people are work on the physical chemistry. They know what the thermodynamics is and uh, uh, what entropy is. Entropy is a simple idea, but fundamentally important. It's from concentrated to distributed. Order to disorder. You can see this is a, a drop of ink put in water. After 10 minutes, it's dispersed in water. Nothing changing in total energy, but irreversible. That's called entropy. That's what the distribute electronics bring us to. So this is what the phase. So how to solve the problem? Cisco company did a survey. And they found if we rely on a battery, because we can solve a lot of problems, but for moving object, a large percentage of internet thing would be impossible if you just use battery. Because battery cannot self-charge. A person has to charge a battery. Just like your cell phone, every evening you have to plug in. The, 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 the battery will not walk off the plug and say, okay, I need to charge. So therefore, that's the limitation. So therefore, we need to build a cell power system, and this is the area I have been working for the last two decades. So first one, we show this one. I proposed the idea 2005. And I wrote this article, say, so power nanotechnology. That time was a dream. So can, can you make the device so small, tiny? Can we be so powered? Can detect a signal, process signal, and a transmission to the external side of the body? Is this possible? So that was called self-powered system. So now let's look at what the possible solution for this. OK, let me cut off this thing here. OK, now how do we view this one? From ordered energy to ordered applications. From ordered energy to distribute applications through batteries. But this cannot solve all the problems. So we need to have the energy from our environment. Body motion energy, mechanical energy, heat, solar, wind, whatever we have to solve our energy need. So therefore, we need both. We need both right now. Okay. So what are the possible solutions? And uh, we published a paper in 2006. This was a paper. That time, we was trying to use nanomaterials to convert little tiny mechanical energy to electric power. But the power was so small and almost useless that time. It was just a scientific concept. But we proposed the idea, so called nano generate for the first time, and so power system. Following this dream, I have been chasing for the last 15 years to develop this system and hopefully provide new solutions, fundamentally important solution for that. I'll give you some story behind that. So this was the original idea for that. And uh, I wrote very clearly, so power. But that time, I did not know we would be solved this problem or not. But it was a dream list. Okay. So, so wh what was the solution? That time, it was a piezoelectric effect. For people who learn materials, they know piezoelectricity is uh, due to non-central symmetric of a crystal structure on the mechanical strain. Uh, cations and a polaroid give you a dipole moment. As a result, you're going to see this potential can drive the electron to flow in external load back and forth. So there was a simple idea. use a piezoelectric effect. A lot of Japanese group work on this as well, on piezoelectric for energy generation. So we demonstrate, for example, 
use a single a single nano wires. We can use a let's say finger motion. You see, can this is finger motion? Okay, finger motion. You can generate AC power as a here. Okay, that's the all demonstrate use heart beating. The first heart beating driven nano generator possibly for so powered pacemaker. This was a uh, more than. Uh, 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 10 years ago. So where did our story start? Our story started was here. 2005, when I finished the paper, I had a lunch with a student. I said, guys, you never forget about this day, and I think we face something exciting. If you ask me that time, I said, why do you feel something exciting? I cannot, I don't know the reason. I just felt, I said, this something could be important. We finished the paper that day. You can see this December 25th, 2005, the Christmas day. So I had a lunch with the students. I said, okay, guys, we finish. Let's submit it for publish and see what happened. That was this time. After more than 15 years, we chased, we particularly increased the power output, and we coined a number of new fields. So if you don't chase the dream, you will not have the dream. If you don't chase the dream, you will not realize the dream. So therefore, I'm very grateful for this one. So I told these guys here, and Today, I'm mainly focused on most recent events. How do we do it? How do we do it? Just give you a story and, uh, from the, this point. So the dream change. 2011, <clears throat> when we do the piezoelectric factors, okay? If you go back, you see this? When we do the piezoelectric, particularly enhanced performance, we accidentally found a trouble electric nano generator. Let's do the mistake. First was a mistake. And I thought it was a mistake. It must be some artifact. So we went double check, a triple check, do multiple percent proof. Yeah, it was trouble electric effect. Then I go detail here and uh, uh, tell you the story behind that. Ever since then, the whole world responds enormous for this one. Let me uh, come to the story about this one, okay? So what is triple electric? Let me show what we found, okay? How do we solve the problem? This is the classical way we do power generation. And this is the way we do, called trouble electric nano generator, TNG. See the, the way it works? You can see this one have run at a fast pace. If you have a high frequency, the voltage barely drive a couple of lights. But this at a low frequency can lit up many lights simultaneously. So the key difference is at a frequency dependent. Our TNG is a linearly frequency dependent. Electromagnetic generator is a quadratic. So at a low frequency here, it's cut off. So therefore, electromagnetic generator cannot be useful for low frequency, like a body motion, or light wind. The wind has to be higher than five meter per second, otherwise you cannot generate power. So therefore, our particular low frequency, let me tell you the detail here. He said, what's new here? After we discovered this one, 2011, we demonstrated very many things. Nano generator could be a micro nano energy source for small electronics, for small electronics, for power shoes, even for environmental cleaning. And also, then have so power system. We have so many sensors, shape adaptable, transparent, MEMS, all can utilize this as a sensors because you convert mechanical tricking into a electric signal. That's a sensor, okay? Lastly, can we contribute to the large energy need we are facing? So I propose the idea we, we are still in chasing this stream right now, okay? So how, how good we can do from our study Ever since it was first invented here, we already improved the power output to 500 watt per meter square. The conversion efficiency is 50% or higher. So the performance is dramatic. Then when I present this one, you think, well, what is the fundamental science here? Let me tell you the science side about this one. You can then say, we come back to technology. So here's our line on my technical talk. First one, what does the physics become behind content electrification. We think we know this for 2,600 years. But the physical interpretation is not well established. The second one, the principle of TNG, think of merits, application, and future prospect. So when you talk about trouble electricity, everybody knows. We experience every day, every moment. When you slide your shoes on the floor, trouble electricity occurs. How do we explain that? When we teach students, for electricity, they say, oh, we use a plastic rod, rub an animal fur, we get an electrostatic charge. But the question was, why the plastic rod has to be negative charge, the fur has to be positive charge? We did not have a good interpretation. 
we took as the facts. So that's the fundamental question we did not answer. So when you look at this one, it's like a blind man in the literature touch an elephant. Depends which angle you look at that. And I have different people have different opinion. Also complicated, solid with solid, liquid with solid, liquid with liquid, gas with liquid, all occurs. And also some people say electron transfer, ion transfer, material speed transfer. Which one? So let me just give you a brief interpretation, then we go back to technic technology uh, uh, application and broad in impact. When you look at the textbook for middle school kids that teach electricity, the first one is electrostatic charge. They cannot explain why side is negative charge here or positive charge here, why? Then they talk about the second class is electric current. Let's talk about electron flow. How come from an electrostatic charge become a current flow? This question was not well explained in a middle school textbook. They just say, okay, here's current, you go. The light flashes, that's all. So let me ask you one by one. So first one is physics contact electrification or trouble electrification. So when we do our TNG, we do this, two plastic materials, physical contact, trouble electricity occurs. And then you measure the current. When you live up here, we used to, used to say capacity change give you a current. You can see the current. As you see in this video, you're tapping here, you're going to see the current flow like that. You can see the current flow like that, okay? Which you see the flash like that. So once you, we put this in the furnace. I, I had a curious question, it was three years ago, I said, let's put it in the furnace, see how long it can sustain, okay? So we put in a, a furnace, heat up. We find by 583, Coven, there's no more output. That means the trouble electricity disappears. And we can start a decay rate in room temperature at 443 Kelvin and 583. So we have a, a, a systematic data. We can assimilate data. We find this thermionic emission is responsible for this one. It's electron transfer, electron transfer. We have a lot more data. Furthermore, say this is heat generated. How about the photon excitation? So we place this uh, trouble electricity on the surfaces, and then use the light to illuminate. We find the charge pertain on the surfaces. Depends the wavelength of the light. You can see this is a 300 nanometer light. No heat effect, very little heat effect. And this is a 280 nanometer. But 240, you have a sharp turn. It's a critical number there, critical energy. Because the energy depends the emission of the power here. Okay, so that's the energy related to this uh, photon electron emission. So we did the second one. I said, let's do this one. We have a dielectric surface, we have metal tip contact. We can deliver charge on the surfaces. Let's change a bias. Can we? We can switch from negative charge to positive charge delivered respectively on the surfaces, on the surface for that. Okay, so this again shows this electron transfer. If you have an ion transfer, you cannot switch the sign of an ion by change the bias. So therefore, we did a number of manipulations and I showed this the fact. So I will skim the interpretation a little bit because it's more, more technical here, just show you. The second question we try to figure out is that if you do two object contact, how close they have to be? How close they have to be for charge transfer here? We found if you have two atoms here, this is the equilibrium position here, this is the inter atomic interaction potential. But when you squeeze one against the other one, so the distance between two is shorter. Maximum electron wave function overlap or electron cloud overlap in this region, trouble electricity occurs. Electron exchange occurs. Electron exchange occurs. And this is because in this one, it has a potential barrier between the two drops. So I draw a schematic to show you how the, the potential barrier drops as you squeeze one against the other one. Just like, a, you know, trouble electricity means we call squeezing, okay? Why do the squeezing? It's because one atom close the other one, so the electron transfer occurs. So I draw a schematic here. This is one atom between A materials, another atom between B materials, and if they're separate a little too far, the barrier is too high, no electron transfer. But when you push one close to the other one, the barrier drops. You say, why the barrier drops? So this comes from, I teach the students uh, the, the uh, electron sample interaction class. I say, okay, when you have one atom and two atoms, you push one against the other one, 
the potential well is this. So there's no barrier. So the electron can jump to here and release the energy. Then electron transfer occurs. Okay? Then the electron remain here because we not jump back because no way to provide the energy to come back. So therefore, after you separate the two, negative charge, positive charge. Use this model, we explain a lot of phenomena we know in our daily life for the uh, trouble electricity occurs. I will just try to make things simple, okay? And then if you heat up, of course, thermionic emission, electrons are gone. So this is the first question. How did the trouble electricity occurs? occurs? We have a lot more recently on a liquid and solid, liquid and liquid, many cases. I'll skip that. The second one, if you have this electrostatic charge, why do they have to flow? Okay, second question. Let's, let me ask the second question. We are familiar with this one. This is the traditional way to power generation. Faraday invented 1831. Use magnetic flux, magnetic field, Lorentz force driven electron flow in the metal rod have current. Our was different. Our difference goes here to Maxwell's time. When Maxwell proposed these four famous equations here, and he introduced displacement current in order to make all these four self-consistent and satisfied continu continuation of current or conservation of charges. He, he theoretically proposed that. But he died at a young age, 49. And until 1886, seven years after he died, electromagnetic wave was observed. Okay, So it was just mathematical at that time, but he said, Displacement current is not an electric current of moving charge, but a time-varying electric field plus a contribution from a slight motion of charges bonded in the atom. So he wrote this is displacement current. So now this is a medium position, but the one term was missed there was the surface charge. If you have other field, look for example, strain field induced, strain field induced surface polarization was not included in that equation. So if you have piezoelectric effect, trouble electric effect, we should introduce here. So let me see, how do we introduce that in a simple way? So we try to modify Maxwell's equation to derive the power output we observe. How do we do that? Let's look at this term specifically. Let's do a simple case here. Piezoelectric case, piezoelectricity on the mechanical strain, polar charge generated. You have electron flow from one end to the other through the external load. That's you see the power here, okay? So how do we see that? The way this medium polarization is given by this equation, permit, this is a polarization, electric field. This is a displacement vector. If you substitute here, you get here. Permittivity by electric field. So displacement current is permittivity, the derivative of electric field. You can find that if it's E is zero, this is zero. If no electric field, there's no displacement current. That was supposed to be. Use this one, he derived the Maxwell, the electric uh, magnetic field. We use it every day, now every moment. All your wireless communication de depends on this. Now, if you have a surface polarization charge, this is the electric field induced, and this is a non-electric field induced polarization. So I introduced this in question in 2016. Okay, after we introduced this one, we immediately derived all the equations we needed to explain this phenomenon. So therefore, we expand Maxwell's discipline requirement to include surface charge contribute to polarization, and of course, all our theory following that be following. This sounds like too theoretical for this group. I just explained to you the schematic for that. What we change? We change the Maxwell equations to have this term included, which was not included in that one. So when I met my advisor, Professor Aji Hoy at the Cavendish, and he asked me, so you add this term in, how many chapters should be added in Jackson's uh, textbook on electrodynamics? So I say, well, at least should be one more chapter. <laughs> Just a joke, okay? So this was the theoretical part. Fundamentally, what's the difference? You say, well, you do some innovation. Where are the innovations? Derivative of magnetic field give the displacement, the electromagnetic generator. The medium position give you the nano generator here. And then. We have piezoelectric effect induced and a trouble electric effect induced. Inside of here runs the displacement current. This was first proposed by Maxwell. We always observe the conduction current, where the two meets, the two meet electrode form a loop. That's what we see. So it used to be, we don't know much about this one. We just say, okay, we see conduction current. We just see a conduction current. 
Then you say, well, if this is fundamentally different from classical, what are the impact? What are the broad impact? Let's see that. The impact is this one. Is electromagnetic generator depends on electromagnetic induction, resist the free uh, electron flow in, by Lorentz force. Here is electro electrification, counter electrification, and electrostatic induction. It's called capacitive current. You're going to see this have the advantage of high current, low voltage, high efficiency, high frequency. So that's why you have to run faster. Okay? This one is high voltage, low current, high efficiency, and low frequency. That's what we human motion related. In our artificial intelligent time, robotic time is human related, low frequency. That's the key difference here. And so we have key advantage here. So what's the basic contribution? You can see when Maxwell proposed the Maxwell equation, he introduced the displacement current from which he derived the existence of electromagnetic wave, which proves the experiment the first time 1886, as today, all this dominate our life every day. But back to then, 1870s, 80s was just theory. Okay, now if we add a term due to non electric field, we produce the theory of nano generate for energy, for smaller scale energy, for sensor network, Internet of Things, low frequency energy harvesting, which is this part. So even this is small, we hopefully next. Uh, Few years, ten years will grow up, will grow up. So this opens door for people work on the materials. We have a lot of materials people work here. What, what are the materials? For example, if you look at the displacement current, what are the best surface area we look at? What are the best material have trouble electricity? What's the best material have permittivity? What's the best thing have robustness? All materials issue. We open a new ramp venue for people working in chemistry, materials, and even in mechanics. So after you've done this one, how do you calibrate this one? So called figure of merits. So for people in this audience, they are work on energy, either work on solar energy, thermoelectric energy, or heat energy, they have their own factors to standard this one. Five years ago, I asked our, my group members, what is our factor? How do we calibrate this one? After a few years work, we finally derive the factor. We can calibrate performance of our technology in order to compare with others. So we inspired by the Carnot's machine. And uh, without going through the detail, how do we work on it mathematically? We work on the, the voltage, charge curve, calculate the area. What's the maximum area we got? That's the total energy we output. We derive some equations. To skip that, I'll just show you the results. We have two results. The first one, for the materials, the best surface charge density is the standard of merit, I think of merit, like a ZT factor for thermoelectric materials, okay? And then we have a structure figure merits because you have a sliding mode, a content mode, we have another one. This one free online, you can calculate what you got. If you look at literature, you think this is well established, like a materials, another genome. It is not well established in literature. Let me show you. If you look at the textbook, they say, okay, here we go. Trouble electric series. Uh, this is better than the other one. It's more positive here, it's negative. If you, there's no number associated with that. No number associated. Until we, a few years ago, I said, we must have a number to quantify that. So we have to be invented a new measurement technology to measure this quantitatively, to standardize the equipment for measurement, standardize the materials for measurement, after three years' work, we have a table which have a specific number for calibrate this one. So the world will have a reference for that. So if I talk so much, you think, well, this sounds like too theoretical. This is too fundamental. What's the broad impact? Let me show the broad impact, OK? Four ma major area, micro nano power source, solar power sensors, blue energy, and high energy. Let me show you the fun part. You're going to see videos from here. If you put, make this one, trouble nanogen in a shoe insole here, you have at no weight, very little, tiny, soft, and you're gonna walk freely walking, a, a person freely walking, the light flashes, put in your shoes, low cost. You can use any material you want, okay? Any material. If you use a silicon, you can make this shape adaptable, twistable, it's a sensor and also a little power generator. Or put an arm, shape adaptable, flexible. 
you can tap on different positions and light the flash. You can see those ones, you can apply to robotics, anything you want to. Because material is broad, you can choose pretty much anything you want. How much power you can generate? If you put on the floor one and a half feet, it's a board, like a uh, half a centimeter thick, you put on the floor, a person freely walk. A cup of water came out. It's not a huge, but sufficient for many things we are care about that, for the area we're interested in. So this just show you, we can be able to make this low cost, put on the floor as a power generator, and no other technique you can do that, okay? For medical purposes, implantable medical devices. We use the breathing of a little rat to drive a similar pacemaker. Today, we'll be able to, the animal breathe once, the power generator be enough to, to jump the pacemaker three times. This is a decade of work. This is a decade of work. You can see that. We recently applied this for large animals. Large animals. We test on a 50 kilogram peak for so power uh, pacemakers. You see the output of this one even reaches like a 60 volts and a micro ampere current. This is enough for drive the pacemaker. So that's why the community is so interested in the implantable medical device for brain stimulation, for nervous stimulation, for drug delivery internal body, for even for drug delivery externally. This have one. A lot of people talk about a fabric. We wear fabric here every day. They want to make a smart fabric. How come a fabric be smart? Let me show you a way. You can see we get the fabric, we can sew this one in different ways, like coming here. This one used the contact electrophone between different fibers. It's become a power generator. You put this one, power generator here. There's a full effect to make a fabric to be functional. Number one, capacity effect. Second one, piezo resistance effect. Both need the power. If there's no power, no, it does not work. The third one's piezoelectric effect. The last one, triboelectric effect. But piezoelectric effect is specific materials. Not all the material have it. Triboelectric is diverse, universal. You can choose this one. You can see this. And then you put them into matrix here. So you can see here, somebody touch here, you know that. That's why you put on this floor. Somebody walk over it, you know it. But the self-generated signal here. You can even make even a motor. This model, the electrostatic model driven by TNG. Let me show you without going through it. Let me show this one. This is a, this is a, this is a model, electrostatic model here. You see, this is the TNG slide once. You can see this run at 1300 round per minute. So for, for medical application, just use body motion, you can drive a motor inside at a high pace. So this shows the soul power system again. The second part I like to talk is soul power the system. Soul power. We have a system. How do we make them soul power? We make a ball like that. We can tap in different parts. You see, when you tap in different parts, the power is being delivered. Okay? And it's second tapping here. No amplification, whatever. Right? No amplification. Yeah. If you cut the power line, no problem. It's just self generated here. The output is sufficient for you to do a lot of things. Each of us use computer at the, uh, every day. We can make a computer keyboard to record the way you're typing, the, the force you're striking, the distance between us. You can see this one. This is this the, this the uh, keyboard we made here. Let me show this video. Students here, i show you that. All right, keyboard. And uh, <clears throat> we made this one underneath the keyboard. And striking the key, he's striking key, all this electric signal generated because we present the force, space between typing, everything here. Utilize which we can identify who typed it at an accuracy almost 99%. So not only just like a voice recognition, this is your typing behavior recognition. Recognition for that. Medical. Can you make super sensitive sensors to measure the shape of the heart beating, heart pulse, and also from which you can derive the blood pressure. So we are developing this one. I think this is very useful because can instantaneously measure a person's blood pressure conveniently. Conveniently. Ah, conveniently. So we try to do this one, you can see, for medical purposes. Robotics. Can you make a robot hands smart? So grab a cup of water is different from grab a, a piece of iron. 
because the force and the sense is different. This is the smart hands towards robotics. Okay, so we made robotic make here. If you use if you use this one, two pieces of paper, two pieces of paper, punch holes one on the other one. When a solid way triggered, it generates signal. It can be a hearing aid. Can you believe a hearing aid without amplification? Directly, a solid way trigger. A few volts come here. Let me show this voice recorder. So the first one, show you this one. This is music. This is recording. The 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 breadth of the frequency. We can tune by the shape design here. Okay, you can use this one. This is a paper-based. Eh? Let me cut this off. Ah, that cannot stop. <laughs> I want to show you the the robotic communication. <laughs> <laughs> Not stopping is there. <laughs> uh, Self-generated. I'm sorry about that. Self-powered. <laughs> this is the communication ro robot. <laughs> okay. Machine, I don't know who talked. See, they didn't recognize the second person. Okay. The machine recognized who, who said. Uh, just use our paper based TNG as a microphone. And also, you can be a recorder. Okay, let me see. Yeah, last one. This is the recorded. And play back, and we keep 90% of the accuracy of sound by this simple paper-based microphone here. So we have a video show you. Next one is uh, I work with my colleague at Georgia Tech. They they work on this one. You can see. What are objects and surfaces you can see it. Used paper-based microphone for wireless microphone. of materials which are thin, flexible, and cheap. Paper and a dielectric called PTFE. The paper has a series of holes laser cut in a specific pattern. Both layers, PTFE and paper, are coated with a thin conductive layer of copper and joined together using glue dots in a grid-like pattern. Use the contact separation electrification. When sound reaches Saturn embedded into an object or surface, its structure microvibrates, resulting in both layers getting in contact, generating negative charges on PTFE and positive charges on the copper coated paper. As the layers separate, potential differences built over the two copper layers, causing the current to flow. They just explain the simple mechanism how it work in, in the a video. Closer and in contact again resulting in a reverse direction of current flow yeah. that completes the cycle of That's the sound generation. signal came out. The structure, material design, and method of embedding Saturn on objects has been optimized to maximize the recovery of sound and the power harvested from this electrical signal. How can Saturn work in the real world? First, let's think about the modern home. And it's all Right now, controlling smart home assistance can be tough. You must be in close proximity for, for the smart assistant home. to hear you. And it's not stop the music. Saturn can solve this problem, as it can be easily embedded into everyday objects, like this nightstand. microphones for interactions and control, extending Alexa's capability to hear from anywhere in the house. Let's look at another example in the home. Saturn can be used for providing in-room contacts. If we have multiple Saturn patches located on a table, it can help detect the location of people around it by the strength of the signal received. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I get so far microphone. Now let's explore how Saturn can be used in outdoor scenarios. In the presence of a loud sound, Saturn can harvest enough power to do small computing tasks like storing a bit in flash memory or to do transmitting wirelessly. 
Saturn based sensors can monitor hearing safety in situations where sound levels exceed human tolerance thresholds, such as in construction zones, mines, music venues, airports, spaceports, and military environments. Similarly, they might be deployed to monitor sound produced by events like landslides, polar ice breaking, mine gas explosions, or military activity. Saturn can help indicate the area and direction of events. Saturn is a promising technology which opens avenues for battery lists. You can find this uh, video, I think, on YouTube. You can find it. <laughs> okay, just show you the, the one clip. Lastly, you say you can have a potential way for world energy. How? Okay. The world energy solver is a complicated problem, very difficult too. The nature gives us light, air, and the gravitation. If you look at the ocean, the tremendous power, but half of such power, extremely difficult because corrosion problem, growth of uh, bacteria, everything on the surfaces make all this so efficient and, and uh, only works in shallow waters. If you deep waters, forget about that. That's just in, that's impractical. How do we do that? Let me find a way, let me show you a way to do this, okay? First one, what's the advantage of our invention? So we built a disc-shaped TNG and electromagnetic generator. Put on one axis, let's rotate, let's see the output. Use TNG to drive these three lights, electromagnetic to drive these three lights, and see which one comes first. Let me show you. These three lights, as soon as rotate, 80 rounds per minute, these three lights by TNG lit up immediately. But these three lights during electromagnetic still remains dark. The reason? Because the output of voltage is low. It's low. Theoretically, this is the reason. This is theoretically, this is the reason. So the fundamental limitation. Until the rotation speed go up and up. Until when? Until about 350 rounds per minute, then start flash. This start flash. Okay, then say, well, okay, the light here. Higher frequency, traditional technology works efficiently. But at low frequency, it will not. So we are not trying to replace it. We do the things class technology cannot do. They say, how do you solve this problem? Let me find a design. So we design a sphere. We put it in the water. And you can see this water, inside the water, the, the balls swing back and forth due to, due to the wavy. Okay, so the, the balls sliding back and forth destroy the symmetry of the two surfaces, so the electron will flow back and forth here. So you see in, in the water here. Just simply like that. So this is the first step, single unit. How about multiple units? We can make multiple units as a networking. And each one can have substantial output. We can put it in shallow water, deep water, complicated situations here. All of them can work together. Regarding good weather, bad weather, day or night, we hope this can be a sustainable, continuous power. In this case, in many cases here, you're more stable than solar energy because solar energy largely depends on weather. Okay, how do we improve? We improve a lot since we invented this idea a few years ago, okay? Instead of using hard ball, we use a soft ball. You can see soft ball, we largely improve. You can see the soft kind of area become large. You can see one ball be lit up that light. See that? In water, it's one ball. Okay, <clears throat> recently we amplify because the wave coming, wave strike and this and here. Another 10 seconds later, another one. So very low pace. So how do we amplify that? We use a pendulum idea. We can largely extend the working to for many seconds after striking. So you can see this one. See? You can see this floating here back and forth. Right? All work together in here. And because amplified frequency here, we also can do that. You can see light wind. You can do light wind. If you have a heavy wind, normal, traditional way works. But for light wind, even at home, at your neighborhood, in your front yard, it can work. But the traditional way cannot work for that. So this is the one. So therefore, what's the key difference? Class technology, magnetism, coils, the output power is the frequency of square. Then ours use polymer materials, organic materials, output is frequency. Linear frequency. At low frequency, we have the killer application. So it's not a substitution, replace. It's do a class technology, 
cannot do use. So we are talking complement, not replace one and the other one. So is this real? How far we go? Let me show you. We already tested the water. You can see we put in this water, the floating. Okay. And we already even study the 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 hydrodynamics in water. We even in a simulator here, this is the water simulator here. We, we're already testing this one. So therefore, we have the hope we can do this one. We have the confidence to do that in the near future. Uh, recently, we already test out in ocean. <laughs> Small setup, test the ocean. Okay, it's a baby step, but who do the first step? Okay, so after we've done that, so how much power you can generate? If we can optimize the, of this one, we, I theoretically calculate, utilize uh, 400 kilometer by 400 kilometer area of surface area, 10 meter depth water make it three dimensional. The total our power output is 16 terawatt. That's the total power consumption for the world today. Use three dimensional design, not just a two dimensional design. You can, you can design in the water like that. So therefore, we have a dream we call blue energy dream. <laughs> blue energy dream. In the near future, we hope to realize for humankind to solve our energy need for that. You know, the beauty of this, this sphere is that it is fully packaged. Whatever grows on our side, whatever on our side, it doesn't matter. As long as there's no water infiltration. Or infiltration, okay? So, I, I just got this video from a, a medium. It was made in Chinese, but you can see what they're talking about then. Okay? This is what they talk about. 70% of the surface area being covered by water. This is the classic way for energy harvesting. We use the right. They put on this, so it's a rotator here. You have to run this at a higher pace here, and you can get the power generation here. And uh, so this is the way. Always this, <laughs> putting the water like that, sealed, so no infiltration. Use polymer material field floating. You can make it three dimensional. You don't have it on the surfaces. You can some depths water. Okay, <clears throat> then use the polar charge on the surfaces if you're rolling back and the force, rolling back and the force. Simple design, okay? Simple design for that. Now we explain the lifetime a lot. We work on that, okay? So you can see the material choice, you can very diverse by that, okay? And then we can make it flexible for foldable electronics, use the TNG, and even can use the liquid and solid. So this one is completely sealed in the, in the, in, in, in the condition for that. And then we can, <laughs> this is simulate <laughs> for that. In the water for that, don't put this on the way the ship goes. Don't put it in the way there's a vacation site. You can put the, the, the location that's hardly useless, hardly use at all. <laughs> so we can design the patches here, okay? Patches here, and then you can design this one. So this is for the, for the, for the blue energy uh, design here, okay? This, is, this animation is not quite right, but just the medium people draw that, okay? So you can see this uh, in the water like that. <laughs> just an animation for that. We do experiment for that. Okay, as this, you can, if you can make a patch like that, you can make a large patch, just like a solar cell. You can make a wafer like that, you can make many wafers, integrate, integrate that, right? Okay, so I have a dream too. Integrate this with wind energy, with solar energy, we have a complete solution for the future too. Use whatever is available for the, for the, for the, for the one. You can see this one? This is wearable electronics. We rely on every day. Always worry about the, of the battery. <laughs> so future is no battery worry. Self-generate. <laughs> Self-generate. Okay. So this is one. What are the commercial opportunity? Because like myself is a person on the science side, and uh, but we start a commercial too. See how far we can go. If we never do it, how do we know we don't? We cannot do it. So we tried the first. We tried to look at, this is a survey by U.S. company. They found distributed energy by 2021, in two years, will be $100 billion market, large business. So the first thing we did was pollution. You know, the car exhaustion pollution here. So how do, how do we do that? You can, I use this video. You can see this student blow through this one. The voltage generates a few hundred volts. We do the similar thing. When the, the exhaustion go through here, we have a voltage generated, do electrostatic absorption. Use this principle, we build the, 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 the filter. We drive this car for 30,000 kilometers, still stand and perfectly stand, better than standard. For pollution treatment 
of automobile. For indoor, like、uh, indoor air filtering here, for offices, for cars, indoor air filtering is also marked. Build so power shoes. So far, the first one is、uh, lighting shoes. The second one is、uh, foot self、uh, health characteristic detection. The third one we can do. Can we find a position? If you have old people that get lost, can we do the positioning? The small children that get lost, can we position for that? So this one do the、uh, the shoes for that. And also the company like Samsung push very hard for wearable electronics. You have a lot of wearable things. How do we power them? Because the the power them the power is not that large, but if you can. Sustainable providers one that can continues to work. So as this field advances here from very small around the world, have 42 countries and regions, 420 units, 4,000, 4,000 uh, uh, scientists work on the area. This was data、uh, a, a year and a half ago. So look forward. When something appears, looks well, how far can this go? I believe that time. If I were to give a public lecture, people don't believe that. Is this true or is something wrong? <laughs> He gave public lecture education here. Years, centuries later, use this to manufacture things like that. So we never know how far we can go, but a scientific breakthrough will bring technology revolution, and also hopefully more than we thought today. A lot of things we cannot think about today, but once many people we involve electronic, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, physics, chemistry. Medical environment, whoever are interested, this one here. So that's the end of my talk. Of course, 20 years work without just myself, I cannot do it. Many students work with me. I thank them for their contribution, postdoc, and also visiting scientists. So look forward. This is the roadmap. Roadmap. We're going to the four major directions: micro nano power source, even small power, but mobile wireless. It satisfies the entropy distribution of power in our environment. As of, why do we get a, weather get warmer and warmer? Because we burn everything, oil, coal, burn everything. Where the heat go? It's distributed environment,、uh, no doubt, right? So no way to re recover. Then solar power sensors. This can immediate application. Anything motion, you're gonna become larger. Then bl large blue energy dream. Those gonna take us time to realize. So I work not only in the fundamental science. But also work on the technology and also the broad impact to many areas. Hopefully, one day we're going to impact the human life in some way. And、uh, so, where are the future? As Lincoln said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. To create it, and use the imagine mi imagination mind, and we hopefully we can create something different or better. Then we are today. Hopefully, find a solution for sustainable development of humankind. So let me go back to my slides.、Uh, some I'd like to thank the World Culture Council.、Uh, Council gave me this、uh, award. I heartily appreciate. Thank you for acknowledgement to my work. I hopefully our work will be useful for the world at large. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wang, for your stimulating talk. So now, so the floor is open for、uh, question and comment. So we have some time.、Oh. So、uh, good morning.、Um, so my name is uh, uh, so Dr. Takahiro Morio,、uh, University of Tsukuba. So I have two questions. So the first one is uh, about uh, this technology as a nano sensor. So especially outward use,、uh, there are a lot of、uh, white noise, white and random noise. And so in such condition, I'm wondering whether this、uh, sensor. Uh, can can be、uh, can happen some, something like quenching or uh, uh, adaptation. So,、uh, does it、uh, happen? And the second question, the second question. So,、um, the one one of the problem of、uh, green energy is how to store. Yeah, good question.、Yes. Let me ask you one by one. Okay.、Yes. The first one is that the existing technology uses piezoelectric factor, piezoresistant factor for. For sensors, 
Like a piece of resistance factor, you have to supply a power. If you have no power, they cannot sense anything. Piece of electricity give you a signal, okay? But if you want to build a piece of electric sensors to a lot of substrate, it's very hard because they needed some temperature to grow the materials, so specific material for that. Our effect is universal on any materials, any substrate, you can do this one. Number one. Number two, the output signals magnitude. Just like I'm talking, you know, the paper vibration, the voltage generates three volts. A few meters away, wireless. You no know, amplification needed. So if you have a few volts output, the detection unit only need a, a millivolt sensitivity detector. But if you have a millivolt output, something that, like we use, normally use, like this one, you need a high filtering. Also, you need a amplification, which needs power, number one. Number two, the measurement equipment has to be sophisticated because you need a microvolt accuracy to measure millivolts signal. So ours is a thousand times at least better, and it could be cheap. So the first question. The second question is storage, right? Mm -hmm. Because like we, what do we use our cell phone? We need a storage. We do three things. Energy conversion, mm -hmm. nano generator, power management. Because the, when, you, when you walk, you can walk faster, slower. That's a random phase. Mm -hmm. Can we convert this random phase into order duplication? So we need a power management, the second one. The third one is energy storage. So we build a nano generator, power management, and a battery or capacitor, fully integrated, called self-charging power pack. This battery will, will not run out of power. As motion go, it is self-charging. That's we, we do need a storage, but it's a different way of storage. Yes, uh, especially so. Uh, I. I think uh, this technology can be applied to something, a new ge uh, generation uh, capacitor. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yes. Capacitors, yes. Uh, even regular capa capacitor, we use that all the time. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, thanks for the presentation, it's very inspirational. And I'm a PhD student uh, at New York University. So, and also I have three startup companies running now. And I'm doing something similar to this uh, by using this food waste into electricity. And I was wondering if you have any study based on this uh, metagenical bacteria, thermophilic bacteria that you can produce electricity out of it. For bacteria, right? Mm -hmm. This uh, a few uh, a number of years ago we used some biofuel cell, mm -hmm. use bacteria for that. You can integrate with this one, so hybrid energy. If you have a bacterial, you can use bacterial convert electricity. You have a motions, use motion, but integrate two into one unit. So use whatever is available, whenever is available. Like solar, you know, like solar, we have light, we use it. We can build a solar cell. On the top of solar cell, we build our TNG. It's transparent. And then you have both. You have some body motion energy, also have the light energy utilize that. So called hybrid energy. And we've, we, we've, we published the first paper 2009 or 10, uh, <laughs> use the hybrid energy. But nowadays get a, a lot more broad. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful talk. Uh, my name is Pang Hong from National Institute for Material Science. And uh, uh, as we know, the nanomaterials are not easy to maintain its properties. So I wonder when, uh, what's the lifetime of these nanogenerators? OK. Uh, <coughs> depends what kind of nanomaterials. For us, we uh, can use some nanomaterials. We don't have to use nanomaterials. A lot of we do surface treatment. Mm -hmm. so, uh, say how long we can run. Let me, let me tell you the shoes we built. Mm -hmm. We do the test for three years, lifetime. 10,000 steps a day for three year warranty on the, on a, on a walk. And for the, if you have the ocean, we now have even better way for extended lifetime. So I think we can, from what we can right now, I think we'd be able to run it for at least of 
five, six years right now, but just beginning. This is the beginning. If you give another few years, we can use that to another 10, 20 years for lifetime because we try to avoid. You know how? Because you don't have to do this all the time. Because the, once the charge gets on, it remains there for hours. So you can free the work without contact. Use this one for a, a few hours. You still continue generating electricity, but no friction. You can use that to extend lifetime dramatically. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. There are a lot of materials opportunity, as I show in the P PBT. Uh, that's open the door for. So I didn't mention specific material used for yeah. this one. We can use the, any materials you you may have for, for this. Yeah. For example, except for the uh, zinc, uh, zinc oxide, so what's other materials? Oh, I think you didn't catch my point. This is not all done by zinc oxide. This is done for PTFE, PFE, all these polymers. Zinc oxide is one of them. We can use 100,000 different materials. It's broad, general. Yeah, okay, thank you very yeah. much. So it, I, I think it could be very useful for uh, this, these. Thank you very much. Thank you.